Welcome fabricators. I've got a friend and they want to know how do I use an API to download data into my Microsoft Fabric One Lake and then consume it into Fabric. Well, that's what we're covering today on Tales from the Field. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Okay, so what we're covering today is how we use an application program interface where I probably have to have something uh, like a bearer token or an authentication code to be able to get information. We're gonna use the classic openweathermap.org. Many people have used this, and this is a really simple one for us to be able to go to. We're going to get an API key, and we're going to use the five-day uh, forecast to be able to specify a longitude, a latitude, and then a location. We're gonna look at how we pass these through as parameters, how we make this a little bit dynamic, and how we read it as a dynamic file. By the way, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Mondays, we have an MS Tech Bits. On Tuesdays, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits, typically where we talk about Microsoft Fabric. You know what we want to do. Let's stop talking about it. Let's go look at that great content. So we're starting out over at openweathermap.org. Great place to be able to get APIs and an API key that you can utilize. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get my API key. We're gonna need that and I'm gonna need that in my pipeline. So make sure you go over, register. You can do this for free um, and they have a lot that we can do for free. I've generated an extra one, but I'm gonna grab that API key and then I'm gonna come over to APIs. I'm gonna to go to the five day, three hour forecast. Click on API. This has a lot about the documentation. We'll get into that in another video later. But the first thing I want to do is I want to grab this API text. Now, I'm going to take all this and I'm going to put this in a notepad. And I'm going to end up breaking this into two points. I also want to make sure that I add a query stream for the units because I wanted to get imperial units for what I'm going to measure. You may want to get metric uh, or you may want to go with standard. But this is what I'm going to do. And there's two big things we've got, a base URL and a relative URL. Remember that we're going to see that again when it comes to us putting this in place in Data Factory to be able to run our pipeline. Now, I also need to get some data. I need some longitude and latitude. I want to get it for two places I love, Wrigley Field and for the Magic Kingdom. Uh, go over to Bing Maps and I can look up the location. Very nicely, I right click, I got my longitude and latitude and you can see I've got my base URL, my relative URL. Now, one note, we are going to add an HTTPS colon to the base URL. Now let's start out. I'm over in Fabric. I'm going to my data pipeline. I'm going to create a new data pipeline. Let's name it exactly what it is. Get weather API data. We're going to go ahead and click create. We go into our canvas, into our pipeline activity. And we're going to start with a copy data. We click the background canvas and we're going to create four new parameters. Those parameters are latitude, longitude, and then I'm going to add one for location because I'm going to pin that to my file name and then the API key. Some of this we're going to use for making our file dynamic and some of it we're going to use to be able to help the process go along. I'm going to start out by inserting my base values for Wrigley Field. Keep in mind, we could use a metadata driven pipeline. We could have a lookup activity and populate all this, but we're going to start with just regular parameters in a pipeline. So let's do a source. I'm going to go to more and I'm going to go to my view other and my rest API. This is where we put that base URL. Now remember, we're going to add an HTTPS colon slash slash to this, but that's our base URL right there. Everything is good. We're going to click OK and we're leaving it on anonymous because we're going to pass our token as a part of the connection string. We go to that relative URL. I'm going to start with concat and then I'm going to start with that text that we got from the API documentation. Now you'll notice I'm putting a single quote and then a comma to be able to stand out exactly the parameters we want to pass, which are latitude, longitude, and the API key. Once I get these in the proper format, what I can do is I can use the parameters that we've already created as a part of our pipeline. So once I do that, we'll start from the top. I'm going to get latitude and I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to click on the pipeline parameters. It will replace that. Uh, same for longitude. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the API key. Once this is done, I click OK. 
Now I want to make sure I tested my connection and I click preview data because if I've passed everything through correctly, it's, it should pull up a preview of my data. There we go. I can see what the data looks like. I can see the format we're getting this all in JSON. And so we want to be able to validate that we've got that. So now that we're good to go, let's set our destination. Now, again, I want this to be dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my one lake hub. I'm going to select my lake house. I'm going to go to files. And now we're going to add some dynamic items here. We're going to start with concatenate again, concat. I want a bronze layer because that's where I'm going to land my JSON files and specifically in a folder called weather data. But now I need to append to this because what I want is I want to have a format for the date time. Now, big shout out to Brad Shat. His recommendation to me was to use system variables and then the pipeline trigger time, because this will get us the local date time specifically to us without us having to do a date time conversion. Uh, that Brad Shat's amazing, right? My first format, I want the year from this. And then I'm just going to copy this from the comma format pipeline through to the slash so I can set my folder directory because the next folder, of course, will be the month. After that, I'm going to paste it one more time and my format is going to be the day. That makes our directory bronze weather data, the year, the month, the day. I click OK. I'm good to go there. But now I want my file name to be dynamic. I'm not going to run the same location more than once in a day. So I just need it to be dynamic for the location and dynamic specifically for the date. So I'm going to say five day weather, and then I'm going to add a comma and I'm going to add our location. So that will append our location to the file name. And then I'm going to add my format pipeline, but I need one thing. Remember, this is a JSON file. So in the file name, I can accept dashes. So I want to dash between location and the year. And then I'm going to change that slash to a dash as well. And then we're going to end up pasting again. So that way I can have my month. And then we'll change that slash to a dash. And then we'll do the same thing for day. So my file should be five day weather, Wrigley Field, the year, the month, the day, dot JSON. I say OK. I'm going to change my file format from delimited text to JSON. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now we're going to fast forward uh, through some of the running. Keep in mind, because we've got our parameters, it's going to prompt you, do you want to use these parameters? We get this, and one of the things that you'll see is it doesn't take us very long, and we have success. Now let's pull up our Storage Explorer. Remember, we showed you how to be able to connect Storage Explorer to your lake house. So I go into my lake house, bronze, weather data, 2024, 07, 16, and there's my file, five day Wrigley Field. There's some fabric magic right there. That's the exact format that I wanted that file to land in. So we've got the API data, but I told you we're gonna get the API data and we're gonna load it. We're gonna load it into staging. So I'm gonna add another copy data activity to my canvas. I'm gonna go to source, and this is gonna be the easiest dynamic code you've ever done because we're going to our lake house, we're going to the files, and because we're using the date time, and we're using the file name specifically, we're just going to copy the dynamic expression language that we already created. We're just going to paste it over here. So it gets the exact file that we are running, that we are passing these parameters for. Exact same file name. We click OK. And this is going to map directly to that. Now, the one thing we do need to change is we do need to change binary. Recursive doesn't matter because we're going specifically to a file. If we were stopping at a folder path, recursive would matter. So don't worry about that. We're just going to go straight on to the destination. And I'm going to land this in my favorite in my favorite place right now, Fabric Data Warehouse. So I'm going to go over to Auto Create Table, and I'm going to create a scheme. I'm going to say staging, staging, uh, I can't talk, right? I'm going to say staging weather data. And then I'm going to deactivate this. Why am I deactivating it? Because we already have the file. All I need to do is run this to pick up that dynamic file. This is for our first test run. Then we're going to run end to end with our second location and see how it works. So I come over in SSMS. I'm connected to my SQL analytics endpoint. And I say select star from staging weather data. If I run this, a little more fabric magic. I've got my 40 rows of data. And I can see I've got it all. And that technically, the city that it's pulling in is Birchwood. OK, so let's go back and let's activate our Git Weather Data API. And then we're going to go back to the parameters and we're going to update them, because now we're running this for the Magic Kingdom. 
So I'm going to come over and let's update all of this. First, we'll start with the location. We're going Wrigley Field to Magic Kingdom. Uh, now we're changing the latitude. Now we're going to change the longitude. Now that our parameters are set, I'm going to run this, and this is going to run end to end. Now, through the magic of time-lapse photography, I am going to speed this up pretty massively. You don't need to sit there and watch my pipeline run successfully. So you can see the API data was successful. Now the insert to staging is going to be successful here in a second. And what we'll do is we'll start out by going over to File Explorer to validate that our files landed correctly. So first, let's go ahead and bring that back up. Let's refresh our directory. Boom, a little more fabric magic right there. Five day weather, Magic Kingdom. Okay, now let's come over and let's change our statement. Let's do a quick group by so that way we can see. We're going to get the city name. These are terrible column names. We can transform those later. But boom, look at that fabric magic. I've got 40 rows for each of them. Bay Hill is for the Magic Kingdom. Birchwood is for Wrigley Field. Well, this is fantastic stuff. Now we've done this dynamic, we've done this end to end, and our next steps, logically, we've got our bronze. We wanna be able to take this data, validate it a little bit more and have our silver. Then we wanna eventually have it be our gold data as well. You know where we wanna keep this going? Down in the comments, sound off. Is there anything that you learned on this? Are you excited about this? Are you using the API functionality? in Microsoft Fabric. We would love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Be good to one another. Today's gonna be a good Bye, day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmation.